Hey, so I want to discuss some breaking news within the last hour. North Korea is suspected of test firing a long range missile. Um, this is obviously big news, but it's not, it's becoming something that is almost, wouldn't say normal, but it's certainly not unprecedented. There were tests in 2006, 2009, I believe in 2013, um, and there was the alleged hydrogen bomb test earlier this year. That still remains to be seen whether that actually occurred or not. But certainly there's been an immediate response to this. Um, Susan Rice has condemned it. Seoul and Tokyo, not surprising, they're very concerned. I'm sure uh, even if they're not making an official statement, I'm sure Beijing will be watching this very closely as well. Um, you know, I really don't need to describe the North Korean regime because it's kind of a caricature of itself. One thing that is true is that it is very, very difficult to determine exactly what is going on there because it is so secretive by nature. I suspect that even China doesn't have a very, very strong grasp of what's going on. I do want to discuss the Chinese position a bit because there's an expectation from Washington um for and other Western countries for China to really be pulling its weight, so to speak, and put pressure on North Korea, given that it's its only real ally. Now, China, although it's also a one party state, um, China is not North Korea. China is years and years ahead of North Korea, and in so many ways, it is um, a much better society. That's not to say that China doesn't have its faults, but I've been to China and Believe me, it's not North Korea. Um, so that's why there's this pressure on China. Um, I think what other countries need to understand is the Chinese position is a very difficult one. On one hand, I think they're genuinely fed up of North Korea basically trying to flex its little muscles. Um, because they know that the pressure will ultimately come down to them. Uh, I believe that, you know, they see North Korea as an unstable, um, tyrannical little regime. They know it is. But the sentimental attachments, apparently um, during the Korean War, which of course China was allied with North Korea, Chairman Mao's oldest son was killed. Uh, one of my students actually explained this to me. He was killed uh, fighting for the North Koreans. Um, so for the Chinese, is that sentimental connection. Um Needless to say, there's the political ideology, although again, I would emphasize North Korea is very much a Stalinist state. China is a single party state, but it's not comparable to past decades. Um, another thing about Chinese politics, it's very different. Generally speaking, there isn't uh, dynasties involved. So, for example, Xi Jinping is no blood relation to Hu Jintao, who's no blood relation to Jiang Jimin, and so on. So, although it's a single party state, there's lots of different factions within the Communist Party. In the case of North Korea, it's very much focused on the dynasty. Um, I, I don't think that these tests are realistically going to start a war, but I think it shows the belligerent nature of this regime. Now, of course, they will come out with the usual propaganda and say oh, it's, we're defending ourselves from American provocation and so on, but... The thing is, it isn't just the United States. It's also Japan. It's also South Korea, whom Kim Jong-un uh, very diplomatically described its leader as a whore. You know, for this tells you something about the nature of this regime, that its head of state can describe another head of state as a whore. What, what sort of... I mean, um, the caricatures, I think, of Kim Jong-un are pretty much spot on. I do think he's probably mentally unbalanced. That makes him extremely dangerous. Um, but I was saying it's important to understand the Chinese position. Of course, other countries want China to come down really hard, and I think they probably will make some sort of public statement condemning the launch and saying they want a nuclear-free region and so on. China, of course, is involved in its own territorial disputes. So, um, you know, China isn't exactly the most neutral country in the region but it's so i think the world sort of sees china as a more responsible older brother 
the, the kind of um, rebellious younger brother in North Korea. But it is important to understand the Chinese position. If, and what actually one reason they don't want a nuclear North Korea, and they don't want an unstable North Korea, and this is probably why they always stand in the way of any human rights actions, not that they are exactly shining themselves, but I think it's because of a potential refugee crisis now. Needless to say, North Korea borders China, Heilongjiang province. If there was a refugee crisis on the Korean peninsula, if there was a war, China would take the brunt of refugees. Now, they're probably looking at what's happening in Europe, um, especially in Turkey, and looking at what happens when there is mass movement of people. So it's certainly true, in my opinion, sending those refugees back is heartless. But at the same time, there is a practical reason for that. Um, the Chinese are very worried about an unstable Korean peninsula. So I think their number one priority is kind of keeping the Korean, North Korean regime in in check. And I guess Beijing is concerned that if they're too hard line, then it's almost like they'll poke the hornet's nest. The thing is, China is a potential superpower. China does have the power to rein it in. And um, they, they need to get the balance right. China's in a very difficult position. They can't just turn around and say, oh, we're going to back all the other countries and we're going to you know, cut all ties with North Korea and so on, because that could potentially make the regime even more extreme. And unstable. So it's almost, you know, China is almost like the the lion tamer, for want of a better analogy. Now, with that all being said, and like I say, this is a developing story, so all the details haven't been released yet. Um, I want to speak briefly about someone called Yuch Revolution, because there's a strong chance that he'll comment on this video anyway. So I'm going to proceed that. Um, I came across this kid a while back. I say kid because he's a young guy. I'm guessing he's about 18 or early 20s, certainly younger than myself. Um, and basically, he's an unashamed apologist for the Yuch regime. Now, this guy is, I don't know his background, um, but he sounds British, certainly a Westerner. And he has taken it upon himself to have this entire channel dedicated to sycophantically praising the Yuch regime. And of course, all the problems that North Korea faces is the fault of the colonialist, imperialist Western bastards. Now, the thing about this guy is he makes these videos defending this hideous regime. And he, he doesn't seem to take sight of the fact that the sheer irony that he is using the freedom of expression that we have in a democratic country to make these videos promoting the propaganda of this hideous regime. I I challenged him. I said, look, if you really believe this stuff, why don't you go there? He said, well, I can't afford it. Okay. But this is the thing. I think if this guy, even if he could afford it, I don't think he would do it. And even if he did, I'll tell you what will happen. He will be arrested as a Western spy. Because this has happened before. Western North Korean converts, for want of a better term, very, very, very small number of them. But uh, there was an American guy, I forget his name. Again, a naive young guy who thought that he was being radical by supporting the North Korean regime. He went to North Korea. He was held for weeks as a spy. So I'm telling you, Yuch Revolution, if you actually done that, if you had the guts to do it, which I don't think you have, but if you had the guts to actually go to North Korea, and support this wonderful, perfect utopian land, you would find a nasty surprise. Now, I don't know if you're an attention seeker. I don't know if you actually believe the shit that you come out with. I don't know if you think you're being revolutionary. I really don't know what it is. But, you know, you're young, but you're not a child. So it's either a case that you have a very strange, warped sense of getting attention, you're fairly ignorant, or frankly, you have some mental health issues. Because I cannot comprehend how anyone, you know, I, if this is not about 
having issues with Western governments. I wouldn't have a problem with that. What I have issue with is the fact that you are such a blind sycophant to this regime. You just won't hear a word against them. And you cannot see how astonishingly... You know, I'm not going to just hurl insults. That wouldn't be practical. But I have no respect for your views. I think they're utterly abhorrent. Especially when there are extremely brave North Korean dissidents who risk their lives, who have come to democratic countries to tell their story. And you have the audacity to insult those people? Call them traitors? Maybe you're the traitor. You know, maybe if you really believe this shit, if you really believe that the UK and the US and all the other Western countries are so terrible, you know, whenever you can afford it, go to North Korea. Really. Practice what you preach. And then we'll see if you'll upload YouTube videos. You won't, because it's blocked there. But, you know, time will tell. So... I am expecting you to comment on this video. It'll be interesting to see what sort of crap you come up with, but you really are baffling, quite frankly, and so are your supporters. You know, you're young, you could perhaps be forgiven for the naivety of youth, but some of your supporters are people in their 30s and 40s who, frankly, as far as I'm concerned, are far left extremists. Um, so, you know, this will be this situation will probably play out as it usually does. There'll become condemnation. China will reign North Korea in a little bit. Things will calm down, and then it'll all happen again. And unfortunately, Kim Jong-un is in his early 30s, so he's a long way to go. I, I very rarely wish another person's death, but in the case of North Korea, the only way this hideous regime is going to end is if the, the dynasty is finished off, if they die off. So, frankly, I believe that the death of Kim Jong-un would be a good thing. Because then you'll have someone like a general taking over. Now, that's obviously not ideal. But anybody outside the Kim family would, at the very least, start to have a reform program, I believe. And it would be something like China. North Korea now is where China was in the 50s and the 60s. So, maybe in 40 years from now, North Korea will be on a better path. I hope so. I really, really hope so. But time will tell.